Hey, what's up guys? This is Brendan with Evoke Bike. So I had a great question come in that really, I put an article out about base miles, but this question is really, we're, instead of calling it base miles, let's really think about this as endurance riding because the terminology, when people hear base miles, they think winter and they think like base miles stops in the summer. But really, if we're talking about endurance riding in the winter, the same thing, you need to be working on endurance riding throughout the entire year. Cycling is an endurance sport. Even really hard efforts have a big aerobic component. But the question that he sent in was, why does base matter? And this is great because there are a lot of analogies out there as to why you should be riding endurance. But I don't know if it's ever been truly broken down, like what's going on? And so this athlete says, hey, so why does base matter? All through athletics, the answer I always get has been an analogy about building a house or a pyramid. Something to the effect of the wider the base, the higher the peak. I take this to imply that aerobic adaptations take the longest to improve, but we kept the longest. There are some other statements out there that all efforts over 60, 60 seconds are primarily aerobic which means, leads me to believe base is important because almost every effort requires some combination of aerobic and anaerobic systems with the former being the primary contributor. Therefore, building a large base is critical to overall long-term improvement in almost all levels of cycling performance. If I'm right, that would be great to hear this stated plainly somewhere. Then maybe people will stop doing the endurance rides where I live. If I'm wrong, also great, I'm glad I asked. 12 years in endurance sports and I've always received an analogy, not an explanation. So let's try and break this down. And the first thing that I think is good that Frank Overton put out, um, I don't think the chart is 100% accurate and some things have changed, but him and Coggin have the famous chart of what happens in the different zones, which zones are best. Obviously it leans a little bit towards sweet spot for his marketing, um, we're not gonna get in this sweet spot, trust me, but let's, let's look at what they talk about and the big ones are increased mitochondrial enzymes, increased muscle glycogen storage, increased lactate threshold, and interconversion of fast twitch muscle fibers from long rides. Okay, what does that mean? Increased mitochondrial enzymes or even mitochondrial content, when you think about this, this is part of, I think I put, posted this already, of the VO2 max equation. No matter how, you know, no matter how strong your heart is at pumping oxygenated blood down into your muscles, if you don't have the mitochondria to actually produce the energy, then you're not going to get faster. So, you know, these aerobic workouts teach the mitochondria to work faster and more efficiently. So the overall density in the muscle tissue increases in terms of mitochondria when you ride aerobically, when you do endurance rides. So more mitochondria means more of the oxygen is used to produce ATP and energy. Increased muscle glycogen storage. That one's pretty obvious. Glycogen, you're using glycogen from your muscles when you're going over threshold, when you go anaerobic. So obviously the more of that that you have, the better. The more that you have, the more hard efforts you'll be able to put out in a race, training ride, etc. Increase lactate threshold. Well, how does riding endurance help lactate threshold? Like we're kind of getting to opposite intensities. Even though riding FTP is still aerobic, What's the difference there? So really, remember the equation. Your lactate threshold is where once you get up towards that point, we're always producing lactate, but the threshold is where you're producing more than you can clear. Endurance riding is going to help you on the clearing side of that equation. So you'll get more efficient at clearing lactate than so that when you're riding at that point where you're producing and trying to clear it as fast as possible, you'll last longer you'll be able to ride at FTP longer. So the endurance ride helps the lactate threshold because it's helping the lactate clearance part of that equation. Interconversion of fast twitch muscle fibers from long rides. What does that mean? So as your muscle fibers, your slow twitch, what's used for the lower intensity rides like endurance riding, 
those type one fibers. As they fatigue, they're gonna call on, hey, you fast twitch muscle fibers, you, you're not doing anything, get over here and help. Probably doesn't happen that way. But when they call them over, that's gonna help the 2A fibers work more aerobically. They're supposed to be the anaerobic fibers, but if you're on a long ride and your muscles start fatiguing, they start looking for help in other areas. So that's really good for an aerobic sport like cycling. They talk about enhanced capillarization in the muscles. So, I mean, the capillaries, they are there to connect arteries, veins, have the exchange of elements between the blood and the tissues. So the more capillaries you have, oxygenated blood can transport easier is I guess the most basic way to say it. That's obviously important. And then development of the slow twitch muscle fibers. We just talked about that. The more that you can develop the fibers that will help you in endurance rides, you can ride longer so you can help improve the lactate clearance aspect of the riding is going to obviously be a benefit for a cyclist. And then the last thing, trains the body to more efficiently use fat as a primary fuel source. So as long as you're not undergoing glycolysis, as long as you're not going super deep, you're gonna use more of a portion of fat. The more often you do that, the better you get at using fat. Now, this does not mean that you get fat adapted and you only need fat. People are extrapolating and saying, oh, well, I'm getting really good at using fat, and so I only need to eat fat, and I don't need to eat carbs. If you do not eat carbs, you will not be able to ride above threshold. I promise you that. So still continue to eat carbohydrates. That is an important part. You need to have a full nutritional profile, we'll call it. So ultimately, these endurance rides, they do improve your aerobic capacity or VO2 max because you're helping the side of the equation of having the increased mitochondrial density so that as you get better at super hard efforts at performing them and pumping more oxygen to the muscles, it's actually able to utilize that because of the mitochondria. These endurance rides help your lactate threshold because it's working on the lactate clearance side of the equation. And lastly, muscular endurance. Your muscle fibers will fatigue less the longer you ride. So the other thing that's also come up is VLA max. Um, I have a video that I'm gonna put out about this where you know more or less, higher or lower value of VLA max is not good or bad, it just represents the type of cyclist you are. But the higher your VLA max, the sooner you experience the buildup of lactate accumulation. So you're gonna fatigue sooner at a lower percent of VO2 max than a cyclist with a lower VLA max. Most, in my opinion, wanna to lean towards 0.5 or under because most people aren't a primary Grand Tour sprinter. They're not you know, a protected rider waiting for the sprint with max watts. Road racers, um, we'll get into that later. But, so all this said, you really want to progress your long ride from if you're riding two hours, you want to get to three hours. If you're doing three hours, you want to get to four hours. I don't think, I, I used to be a big fan of the six hour ride. I do think there's benefit to it. It's just very fatiguing as opposed to a five hour ride. And this is, I'm really talking more now to the cat one through three cyclist. Um, you can gain a lot from a five hour ride. I do want to start myself mixing back in some six hour rides now that the season's getting underway. You just gotta be careful hitting the six hour number. It's a big day. It takes a lot out of you and it's the cost benefit. You know, is it worth it versus being a little bit fresher for another four or five hour ride? And lastly, this guy said, hey, I hope people just do these endurance rides. Um, you know, why should I care about it? So I think people skip these rides because it's hard to put a value. There's no metric in WK that says, oh, your mitochondrial enzymes increased or, oh, hey, you're a little bit better at lactate clearance, or, hey, you're now calling on your 2A fibers more efficiently, right? We only see like the power numbers, these intangible aspects of becoming an endurance athlete that take a long time. Like this is a long game. I'm still working on endurance. I'm still working on base miles in my 12th, 13th year of serious cycling. So I think people just pass on it because it's not like, I set a new 20 minute power best. You will set those new bests when you do these more basic rides. 
So that's why the analogy came out of the foundation. That's why people say bigger the base, higher the pyramid, or higher the skyscraper goes. But it's because of those things. More mitochondria, better at lactate clearance. It's important, and when we can't see a metric, it's very easy to try and gloss over it. So that is why you should ride endurance. That is why you should keep your hard sessions to two to three times max a week go aerobic, do endurance, do the base miles, you will get better, I promise you that. And the number one rule, stay consistent and doing endurance rides will help you do that because it does not build up a ton of fatigue, but it will turn you into a killer cyclist. So I hope this Cat4 question was asked or was answered adequately. Thanks for your questions, hit us up and we appreciate all you do. If this was helpful, please share it with a friend. Have a great day, see you guys.